back in studio for episode two of season two. Um, so far, so good. One episode in. What do you think, Coach? Yeah, it's good to be back. And I, this is one of my favorite times of year in the fall. The football going, college and pro, and high school stuff is really rolling right now. Late September, it's it's perfect, and the weather's starting to get better too. And now that we're officially in fall, it's coming up on us quick here. The homecoming parade is October seventh. At 3 p.m. It's a new format this year. It's a half day of school on the 7th to get the kids out and get the parade rolling at 3 o'clock and then basically take it on up to the football game is, I guess, the plan. Yeah, I think there's a tailgate. There's a football game. I know my kids are excited to get out even at noon that day. And um, it's, a, it's a good thing for the community to promote, you know, homecoming weekend. Yeah, that's something I kind of thought about, too. St. Bridget's having the half day with us. I thought it's really a good job of those two schools working together to make sure everybody can be a part of it. Uh, I know that my girls are excited because we're going to have a float in the Bray girls basketball. So Yeah, I think my daughter's looking forward to trying to ride on the float for Little League basketball too, so um, Madeline's excited there. But, um, yeah, it's, it's big times coming up. Yeah, and we had some big action this week, so let's jump right in because this could be a long one. Let's go to Riverbend for the Riverbend Roundup. Yeah, congrats. I got to give you congrats to lead into this. Your girl's with a big W. Yep, seventh grade picked up their first win of the year this uh, this week, and that was also my first win, so it's kind of nice to get that taken care of, and now we just move forward and look for more and more wins. So let's jump into what they did this week. We uh, Seventh and eighth grade opened this week with a tough loss to a very good union squad. Uh, Ayla Shapinski led the seventh grade and scored with 11 points that night. That was a tough one for me because my cousin coaches you, and I really would like to win that game. Yeah, and I, I know Ayla is a really good little point guard, and I'm, I'm you know excited to see her develop as yep. she gets older. And on Tuesday night, 8th uh, grade dropped their matchup to St. Clair. Uh, it was one of those that early St. Clair kind of jumped out, and then they made some defensive changes, and the girls locked them down. And it just, as some of you know, we have short benches, and by the time the fourth quarter got there, you're just gassed playing so hard defense to get back into the game. Uh, like I said, the seventh grader in their first win of the season, 26 to 12. Izzy Gaines led the balanced scoring attack with eight points. Ayla Shapinski and Morgan Howard had six, and Bree Bearden chipped in four. So we were pretty even across the board that night as far as our scoring went. Uh, on to cross country. Cross country had a couple uh, meets. They had a tough course at Festus. This past weekend, Coach O'Neill said all the athletes worked hard and they continue to improve each week, and we'll see what they can come up with. I believe next week they have another meet. I think they're doing a lot of their stuff on the weekends, right? Yeah, I think it's every Saturday for them. Yeah, and the football team at Riverbend, the 7th and 8th graders, last week um, went to Festus, and the 7th grade got their first win of the season, going to 1-0. and 8th grade took one on the chin and, and lost to the Tigers. Uh, to start the season 0-1. Last night, both teams traveled down Highway 44 to St. Clair to take on the Bulldogs, and the seventh grade ended up losing 40-6. to uh, Gavin Haddox did score his third touchdown of the season, and the eighth grade in the nightcap fell to 0-2 with a loss to the Bulldogs. So that kind of wraps up a busy week at Riverbend, but um, just a plug to our bosses, uh, Mr. Dempsey and Mr. Grody, things have been going really well here this year, and uh, it, the kids are excited, and we've had a good year at Riverbend so far. Yeah, it's been great. But now let's go jump up to 425 Indian Warpath Drive. The football team um, had a big ma a matchup with state-ranked Union on Friday night. Um, they ended up losing to the Wildcats in their high-scoring uh, passing attack, 52-14. to some bright spots for the Indians. Freshman Seth Stack threw for 204 yards, two touchdowns on the night. Uh, freshman Colton Kasuth uh, totaled 169 yards out of the backfield, highlighted by a 65-yard touchdown catch on a wheel route, and it was really pretty. Uh, did not look like two freshmen hooking up on that. Um, our guy Weston Kulik ran, or actually had receiving yards over 100, and a touchdown on the night. Uh, Jaden Thomas did a nice job kick returns for the Indians and on defense uh, Radon Fowler played a pretty good game at defensive tackle He was really a force disrupting the Union run game um, There were some bright spots to that game and, and I know the Indians are looking to improve this week as they travel to Sullivan tonight 
for a Four Rivers Conference game. The JV team also fell to the Wildcats on Monday night this week, 33-20. to And as you just noted, we are recording on Friday prior to the game, so we will have to either try to edit that in or you'll have to catch it next week from us a little update on how they do against Sullivan. Well, let's move to softball. Softball traveled to Owensville over the weekend for a little round robin style tournament. They went one and two on the trip. The girls lost to Vienna, who I believe is maybe a defending state champ from you know last year, or just two years. I think ago. they were. And Russellville, and they were able to beat Owensville. Brooke Bearden got the win on the mound versus Owensville, throwing six innings and twelve strikeouts, which is pretty impressive. Trini Brandhorst continued her offensive ways, and some young players got some more valuable experience getting into the lineup as they kind of. Let's say look to the future, but they've got a lot of young kids that are starting to get kind of some their feet wet on the varsity side of things. Uh, the conference win, also senior night this week, uh, over Herman 15 and nothing. Uh, they honored Molly Pritchard, Shelby Kellerman, Hannah Dugan, and Marty Fivette, who who will lead the softball program at the end of the season. Softball with the big conference game against Union on Thursday. They dropped that one seven to three. That pushes the softball record to 10 and 10 headed into the last few games. I believe district starts like October 10th. Yeah, it's like the shortest season of any of our sports. They, I mean, they cram a lot in because, you know, pitching's a little different on that level than with us in baseball. Uh, moving over to cross country, the boys and girls competed at the Festus Bowls Invitational over the weekend. Grace Dreyer led the squad, the girls' squad, finishing 21st overall in a very, very loaded field. Yeah, I think there were like. 36 teams in that invitational so to, to finish in the top 20 25 is pretty good accomplishment i will say it's fun to remember because last year grace was part of the riverman roundup quite a bit during she cross was. country and now in track and now we get to say it at 425 any warpath drive so we get to kind of see these kids move up and she fun. she's a hard worker yes yeah, she is a uh, boys soccer competing in the hillsborough tournament this week they started off with a tough loss to washington two to one and then they bounced back, though, with a comeback win Tuesday, scoring three second-half goals to beat Frederick Town, 3-2. to two. Goal scorers in the first two games were Gage Clark, who had two, Brett Bearden, and Javier Fernandez. Wednesday night, the Indians dropped a close one to Hillsborough, 2-1, to one, to finish out the tournament. So they're, they're right there at it, and, you know, our guest this week is going to be head coach Steve Smith, so we're going to really get to dive into what the soccer team's doing. I know they're young as well. JV soccer team, kind of off to a late start. They're 1-1-1 one, one, one on the year. This week, they had a tournament. I believe it was a Union JV tournament. They uh, tied in their first round game, and then they beat Washington in a pretty dramatic finish to enter the championship game on Saturday night. I know head coach uh, Danny Missy has to be happy with the team to find their way into that title game up there at Union. Uh, freshman Lucas Tennyson got the big goal against Washington from a free kick from 35 yards out. The coaches are really encouraged by Lucas and the young players in the program. I don't know. I just know 35 yards is a pretty good field goal. So I got to imagine to be able to put that thing in the back of the net from there is pretty tough to do. Yeah, we had him last year as an athlete at Riverbend, and he's he's a good-looking athlete, and I, I know he's talented, so I know they're pretty excited for his future. Uh, the girls' golf program uh, matched up with St. Clair um, and Union at Birch on Wednesday night, and I, I didn't get a result on that one. I do know the golf team um, has conference next Monday at St. James and they're looking to get into that medal count. Um, Coach Shims is continuing to work with kind of an, a little bit of an inexperienced group of girls and you know it's it's one of those sports get your kids out put a club in their hands and you know we, we often have a little bit of low numbers on our golf teams and we'd like to improve that and it's a great sport as you and I both know. Yeah I've played golf since I was young and I'm still bad at it but Yes, great great time to spend time with your buddies out on the course. Uh, the girls' volleyball team, busy week for the varsity girls. They're, they're a program that uh, has uh, improved their schedule this year, and they're looking to play some of the best teams in St. Louis, and they have. And um, they were really looking forward for a Monday matchup with Borgia as the, the Knights came to the reservation. And it went all the way to a fifth set. Heartbreaking fashion, our girls ended up on the short end against Borgia, um, but they had to turn right around and travel down 44 to Sullivan, and, you know, I don't know if it was a little bit of a letdown, but they lost to the Eagles in four sets. Uh, some people kind of see that as a minor upset. 
uh, for their conference opener in the Four Rivers. And last night, they did rebound to beat New Haven, the Shamrocks, in four sets. And the injury bug is for real with the volleyball squad this year. They've encountered an ACL, I believe, one of their starters before the season. They've had a hand injury to the libero. They've had a collision recently, uh, which caused a concussion. So Coach Braymeyer has really had to rally the troops. And that whole concept, next girl up, has uh, been having been followed for sure. The record is 9-6. and six. And one and one in the Four Rivers. Next week is the big Herman tournament. It's a historic tournament, and they get a rematch in pool play with both New Haven and Borgia. And I know the girls are looking forward to the Herman tournament week as uh, it's one of the best tournaments usually in the state of Missouri. Yeah, just to kind of fill people in that are newer to the volleyball thing, the Four Rivers conference has been a nasty conference when it comes to volleyball for years. It's the best small school conference in the state of Missouri by yeah. far. Herman's been good forever. I mean, I think their volleyball team is being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, and then New Haven's always been really good for being a small school. And recently, we've had some pretty good teams in it as well. And Owensville's a pro program has really improved. Yeah, it's one of those that's kind of like girls basketball. The smaller schools are pumping out conference titles a lot, just like in that. So. Mm -hmm. Well, now I think it's time to we move on to everybody's favorite segment. Performance of the week. All right, so who do you got for your performance of the week this week? Well, I know they took a loss on Friday night, but um, there's there's been a couple. I could have picked from a couple of the freshmen. Uh, it really is difficult stepping in. Playing against 18-year-olds on Friday night, it's it's just a different different experience um, for a younger kid. But I, I have to pick freshman running back Colton Kasuth for the Football Indians. Uh, this young man has come in on with almost no football experience, and I think he had a brief JV stint the other night, a couple weeks back, where they almost taught him running back on the fly. They said, "Here, we're going to teach you a couple plays tonight, and you're going to go run the ball." Well, uh, I guess he did so well on Friday night that week. He was getting varsity carries and now has emerged as the varsity starter for the Indians. And Colton has 300 yards rushing so far on 53 carries, 5.7 yards per game. He's caught two balls for 69 yards and a touchdown. The big one was that wheel rod out of the backfield um, Friday night against the Wildcats, and then he took it to the house uh, he's kicked six extra points. I believe he's handling the punting duties. This all for a freshman who was just pretty much slated to be on the JV. The kid is a straight A student. Um, very, very nice kid. Hard worker. One heck of a baseball player as well, as we'll probably get to see in the spring. Um, I know the community should be proud of this young man. Great job, Colton. He's my performance of the week. Well, my performance of the week... I thought it was pretty obvious, but I was told that I can't give it to myself for my first career. Probably, probably not. Probably so not. I won't, even though I thought, you know, I thought Coach Brown might give me some love, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to go with, we, we brought, you know, this whole thing is to kind of put emphasis on different programs and different levels. So mine to me is the JV soccer team for finding their way into the championship game at the Union Tournament. I mean, those that don't know, Union soccer is pretty good. That Union Tournament is always usually really good. JV varsity level, it doesn't matter. Uh, it seems like they had a late start to the year. We talked about they haven't played a lot. But to be able to jump kind of into that as their first real test and make your way to the championship, especially off of a big dramatic free kick kind of late, because I'm thinking that was towards the very tail end of the game. So my performance of the week goes to the JV soccer boys. Yeah, good job, soccer team. I know... Um, their numbers have been pretty good, and some of our programs continue have, having goals of building their numbers, and it's needed. And um, I know Coach Smith and Coach Missy are, are pretty pleased with the, the progress from these yeah, guys. Like I said, we're going to get to talk to Coach Smith here in just a couple of seconds. Can't wait. Can't wait so to hear we're it. Gonna, now we got two non-soccer guys come up with some questions, so we're going to see how this works out, but it should be pretty good. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back with Coach Steve Smith. All right, we're back in the studio. I am joined with 
boys and girls head soccer coach Steve Smith. Coach, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me, Cody. Well, hopefully, we won't have any more microphone issues. We had a little mishap to start, but let's uh, let's uh, dive on in. I know people are kind of interested. This is a question we always have: is kind of a little bit about yourself, where your background is, and sure. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, not a Pacific guy. Uh, I don't live too far from here, though, so I don't consider this place close to home. Uh, born and raised in St. Louis. Um, started playing soccer, you know, in grade school, and then middle school started playing select soccer, and started with Colpin Kicks. That was my first ever club team, and then. Transitioned over to Bush Soccer Club, which is now St. Louis Scott Gallagher, which was our rivals back in the day. Uh, high school, played at CBC for a couple years in Terry Mickler's program, and then played over at DeBerg for the other two years. And then uh, did some collegiate soccer over at Merrimack, and you know we were one of the top teams in the nation, and played under some good coaches, uh, Dick Westbrook, Mickler, uh, coached along Dan Boker when I got into to soccer and coaching over at Pius. So um, and that kind of brings me where I'm at here so what kind of drew you to soccer um you know I would I would say this I I have older brothers and you know it was when we were younger those guys were always playing and pick up hockey and soccer and baseball and so I was always playing sports against guys that were two four plus years my age and you know just soccer is is action it's just constant movement and you know, if you got a lot of energy, it's 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 a good sport to use up that energy, and it's fast paced, and that just kind of fit my personality. And you know, there's just there's there's no thrill that comes close to, to scoring a goal, and, and soccer provides that. You mentioned playing with older kids, so that kind of brings us into this year's team. Yeah, you have a nice little blend of youth mm -hmm. and some older some seniors. How has it been to try to get that team to gel with each other? Um, I just think because this group is really competitive, and and that's from obviously the seniors and juniors that you know we have a really good core of talented players, and and this incoming freshman group that's that's talented, but but they're hungry, and um, now these guys don't shy away from competition. They, you know they thrive on that, and you know they like to challenge each other, make each other better, and and you know that's worked. Um, you know, to this point of, you know, nothing I had to do anything magical of getting them to gel, but just, you know, competing against one another. But then, you know, when we put that jersey on, we're playing other teams and we're playing for Pacific and we're, you know, we're all on the same team there. Yeah, I, I'm sure Coach Missy's enjoying the younger class too. It sounds like I know they're in the championship game of the Union JV tournament uh, Saturday, I believe. Yeah, um, you know, they tied Union um, in the first round and, uh, came out last night and played Washington and, and won one nothing. So kept the shutout going. Um, you know they called back a goal in Washington. They were offside, so I don't know if we drew a little luck there. But uh, Lucas Tennyson, who was open for his first goal, even before that game, was talking to coach about it, and he got a shot out 30 plus yards out and just put it upper 90 and, and end up getting the game winner. So guys are excited to beat Washington and you know put us in position to play for a championship. Yeah, the JV was my performance of the week this week on the uh, show after their nice showing. I know they kind of had a late start to the year, it seems yeah. like. But. Yeah, that's all me with the, the tournaments in the very beginning of the schedule. But, you know, now we're, we're rocking and rolling. So as we move to kind of the second half of your season, what are some team goals that you're looking to kind of get accomplished with this group? Uh, you know, last year we, we laid out some goals and, you know, we fell a little short of achieving them. So I made sure that these guys, you know, helped create them and, we're more bought in. Um, you know, they're your basic goals. Uh, we want to have a winning season, which I think to some is simple enough, but you know, our schedule, every game's a grind. So it's really, it's a toss up 50-50, who's got more of the will to win. Uh, there's no easy games. Uh, so that's what our guys are hoping to do. You know, we're, we're hoping to win a, a conference championship. We, we fell just short. It's still heartbreaking, still kind of remember how we we fell short, kind of were able to control our own destiny and then had a disappointing result. And against Sullivan and losing in PKs and then not being able to close it out, you know, after beating Union the first time around and not winning third place. So I know conference means a lot to the guys. And with just us, Sullivan, and Union, it's, it's really anyone's conference. And then uh, districts, as tough as they are, if we can position ourselves in, you know, a decent seed, then, you know, we're, we're talking about winning that first district game and then you're playing your best soccer you know anything can happen and not to just jump away from the boys but when you take them to the girls 
they had a pretty good season last year. Is there any kind of preview you have? On there? I know I think a lot of them are returning. Yeah, um, it is. It's a it's a perfect storm of of experience and, and young players that they themselves are experienced. I would say what I'm excited about with the girls is just the older group of girls are are a good group of ladies. Uh, they're leaders. They're positive role models. And some of our younger players, and we, we had a lot of younger players that were, were playing and even starting a varsity that, you know, can look up to these girls and emulate them. And, you know, and there's just a good mixture of, of girls that are talented, but, you know, are hungry and want to compete or driven. And, um, yeah, it's exciting. And I know that the one thing they want to do is is beat Union. And I think it's, it's very possible this year. But that's what I was going to say. I know that's the biggest thing on the girls' minds for yeah. the past couple of years is the beat union. Yeah. But I will, I will say this, and I think our kind of approach is there's always going to be a rivalry there, you know, a friendly one, but still rivalry. Uh, but I try to mention to the players and, you know, boys and, and with the girls is, you know, to not, try not to put them up on a pedestal. That, you know, they're just another school and another team. Um, you know, sure, they, they gain respect, but – uh, we treat them like any other team in any other school and not try to put too much pressure on ourselves because at the end of the day, it's, it's just a soccer game. and you just got to go out and play soccer, and, and good results will hopefully come from it. Yeah, and that's a great way to approach it. But I will say I'm friends with one of their assistants, Brady Weinhold, and I would be real excited to hold that over him yeah. for a, a while if we're able to knock them off this year. Yeah, I mean, we, we came close in the district semis with the girls. Um, you know, made it a 2-1 game with about 15 minutes or so left and, you know, kept them, you know, kept them on their toes and had an opportunity to equalize it and, uh, you know, fell just short, but still a tremendous effort beating Washington in the, the district game prior to that. And, you know, our, our team's going to only get better, I think, from here on out. And, you know, that's their, that's their goal. And we're going to have some opportunities next year and really the years to come to, you know, kind of in a unique spot you're in your second year at the boys first year at the girls you kind of get to build your programs kind of together at the same time you're starting to like figure out how you want to play and all that is that kind of a fun also difficult job to do but kind of get to come in and start to reshape it and how you want to build this thing yeah I, I will say what I'm really taken back by is just all the help uh you know when I was an assistant having Dana Kelm's help um you know, with boys, with Danny Missy's help, like, you know, even being at Riverbend now with Todd Dempsey and Blair at the high school and Andy at the high school, just everyone has been so supportive. So, you know, even though I'm a newer guy, I still feel like everyone's out there to help you and, you know, and help you, you know, achieve your goals for, for the teams. And so that's that's made things easier. Um, you know, but there's, there's still all the newness to things. That's, for me, that's always – you got to get through that, get through the new things, you know, like last year and not realizing there was a homecoming parade, you know, and we had to get the guys out there on the trailer and, you know, and do part, part of that and, you know, helping give back to the community and whatnot. And so, um, yeah, I, I think there's, you know, there, the second year with the boys soccer team is just knowing how things kind of go kind of helps slow things down. I think and last year things went by real fast. And then with the girls just, having a different perspective of being an assistant coach, going back and helping coach JV and kind of developing those players helps you kind of take a step back away from being a varsity coach where, you know, everything kind of falls on you to, you know, realize that, you know, the, the full picture of things. So having some good perspectives to be able to, you know, rumble programs right. now. And you mentioned it too, and I was going to hit on it one more time with Mr. Dempsey here in the building. I'm sure he, loves to talk soccer any chance he gets because he was the boys and girls coach for as long as I can remember the whole time yeah. I was in school. So, as I mean, like I said, it's it got to be kind of nice to have somebody else that's been there to yeah. ask these questions too, to bounce things off of, especially in your own building. You don't got to go anywhere. Yeah, it, it helps. Uh, you know, and him and I already had some conversations, you know, the good conversations, the tough conversations. But, you know, and he gets it um, that, you know, this is more than just, soccer and a game and coaching you know we're trying to teach these young men and women to become better versions of themselves and so it's it's great having that resource and a person that you can go to for now before we kind of wrap up that was our high school stuff i've been in your classroom i've seen the mls to stl <laughs> stuff so um, as far as pro soccer goes 
I'm guessing you're kind of excited about City coming here soon. Oh, yeah. Opening got, up. Yeah, I got season tickets. Uh, well, one. We can only afford one, so you know, I'll have to figure out uh, an opportunity to take my wife and girls. But, I mean, I've been following that journey since, really, since the beginning. Uh, you know, the MLS to STL days where I, I knew some of the guys, Jim Cavanaugh from Worldwide Technology, who's part owner with the Taylor family. You know, and Tom Strunk, who's who's a minority investor in the the current club right now, and getting to know those guys, and so um, kind of seeing the the heartbreak of the first go around. Well, technically, it's not even the first go around; it's the second. Um, but coming so close and then losing a vote, you know, in the public vote, three thousand three hundred votes, thinking the dream of MLS is is gone, and then. To make matters worse, the Rams leave St. Louis, and you know I'm a big football guy. Like my dad took me out to those games, had season tickets, and so you just that's it was just heartbreaking. And then you know the Taylor family, Enterprise family, kind of resurrects this dream of Major League Soccer and bring it to St. Louis. And you know I, I go by that stadium quite often, and I've been in there now, so I was able to tour it when we got season tickets, and it still is a dream. It gives you goosebumps. You know you want to pinch yourself that you know we were able to do that bring soccer here and yeah you know, st louis it's it's the historic capital of soccer in, in the country and and it's it's good to have you know the highest league in here and bring another sports team back to st louis yeah i've been to some of the uh, bush stadium games with the women's national team and the men's national team and st louis sells those out yeah. so well that i'm real excited to just hear how crazy and loud it's going to be inside that new stadium so, and I guess you'll be there since you got Yeah, it. yeah. So, I don't think I'll be in the uh, the stands where they're standing and singing and drumming and everything. But, you know, I, as a fan, I do like to kind of go and sit and observe, watch the game. But it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, an event, a festival, you know, before and after the game. And it's just bringing people downtown. And that area and Union Station is, is really incredible. You got Market Street where you got – the soccer stadium, you got Enterprise or the Blues play, Bush Stadium's not too far. I mean, it's just it's going to be one of the great sports streets yeah, in America. It's just a really nice area to go watch some sports. So after the expansion draft, I'll have to come down and talk to you and tell me how, we, uh, how we're looking. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but our, our City 2 team, it's that reserve team. So we have half of that team is of guys that are going to play on the first team next year. And their first league and in, in year together – and the uh, MLS Next Pro, they're Western Conference champions. So they win three more games. They're in the playoffs. They were supposed to play at Centene Stadium, but there was a whole electrical issue.